Hey, welcome back Design Squad and in this sketch Noob to Master series video I'm gonna show you how to make a really intuitive and quick color swap using symbols in sketch Now an example of that where it would be really useful is this So imagine that you have several buttons which might be let's say your object So let's say if I would create a symbol for this button with that green state and I would call it let's say button slash primary or something like that and I would create a symbol now in the symbols as you can see I have this button with all the text you can just make a copy of it and then let's say make a secondary to secondary button and let's say call that I don't know something else but I'm gonna just pick a random shade and I'm gonna pick that orange from my existing symbols like so so now I have two buttons and going back into my designs I could just delete all those instances and all the objects whatever it doesn't really matter at this point and I could just add one or the other of those um, symbols as you can see button primary I can just add it and then I can also add another one or just replace it like so and all I need to do is just add different text to it and then it's done and then I can just swap the symbol back and forth as I please right so it's this is one way to swap different shades color stylings keeping the same you know information on just overriding it but it only applies to that specific symbol let's say if you would go to a different symbol you would need to almost recreate the symbol from scratch and that's okay you know it's not too bad so let's say all these let's say running icons right here if I click on the running as you can see it's a symbol and I have orange I could define it into violet with a different icon and so forth but it would have to be nested you know really deeply but what if I want to reuse the same exact shade meaning to make that running icon into the same green well I, I could duplicate the effort or I could keep just one color thing and just add it as a as a shader almost so this video is going to be exactly about that so if I go back to my uh, symbols I'm just gonna create several symbols uh, I'm just gonna make a copy it doesn't really matter how it, how it looks like gonna delete the text we don't need the text all we care is about that background rectangle which we don't need to round corners anymore and maybe I'm just gonna keep it like so so it's big enough to cover any needs like this and I'm gonna say let's say color slash primary and then do the same with another so once I define my panels with let's say the palette of a color so imagine that you have a branding guidelines this is where the interesting bit comes because mm -hmm. then you can add those shades to any symbol and any object you want and let me show exactly what I mean so let's say in my designs if I would go back and just detach it from symbol this, this button is no longer a symbol it's editable I can just do whatever I want of it as you can see I have this register button I have text which has a no right but I can just replace it and say let's say create an account or something like that a call to action and then I have this shade which is has only a fill now I could just pick different colors or I could reuse our block which we just defined before so I'm gonna reuse the block and how I'm gonna reuse a block as a symbol we defined from color let's say primary like so and here's a button no, no no I'm just joking it's not yet there let me just make the actual default button into black one or white one let's let's make it black and our color palette is gonna be this so Imagine that all we need really need to do is just to cut out the button shape out of our block So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select Those two objects the rectangle below and the actual palette shade the shader Let's say let's call it that way and just create a mask and boom. I have a button which basically now has a color shade a mask and all I need to do is just literally sh change the color shading across because the colors are defined as a symbol which I can just simply change like so pretty neat uh, it becomes even neater if I would make this button into another symbol 
like a proper symbol and just call it button uh, CTA1, let's say. And here, as you can see, I have the color primary as one of the overrides. And I can just simply switch the colors. And if I want to add even more colors, I can go back to my symbols and make a copy, let's say, of one of uh, these purple ones. Let me pick out one of, maybe I have another shade somewhere. I think I do. Um, perhaps it's this very soft, soft yellow, very nice yellow. Um, and then I might just give it, let's say, yellow as a shade. And if I get, go back to my objects, you imagine I have icons, I have buttons which are made like masked and cut out. All you need to do is just select and replace it and it's going to replace automatically. And if I'm not, let's say, if I'm not happy with that shade, all I need to go back to symbols and replace my primary shade to, let's say, darker green. Like so, imagine that the brand just got rebranded. If I go to my all, every item is going to be replaced now with that. And so that gives you a flexibility to switch the background colors really quickly and almost maintain a minified design system, which I'm going to cover in a different playlist uh, in the future. But as you can see, it's another way to go deeper with the symbols, the nesting of the symbols in Sketch and make it really awesome because you get a different override. So I would recommend before you even start with a design, Make a few blocks like these, make them big enough to cover any object you might need and define your colors in the actual, you know, symbols like so. And then start in the design defining, let's say, buttons, icons, different states and override it. And just to finish off, I'm going to give you another really quick way to, you know, to, to show exactly what I mean. So let's say maybe I'm going to make an icon really quick, thicker one. And this is from now on project. Let's let's do this one, let's say. For whatever reason, this is our icon. And as you can see, all it has is a fill. So I'm going to put it in a in a folder and call it, let's say, icon X. And here is where the interesting bit happens. Again, I can add our color shade as a symbol color, let's say secondary, like so. And I'm going to select those two bad boys, the shade and the actual cutout and just mask it. And boom, again, this thing now becomes, you know, changeable. So I can either go inside it and find that smart object of the color shade and just simply switch. Or I can just convert that icon X into a new smart object, which you should be doing anyways. And say it's icon, let's say speech bubble, right? And here I can just simply skip the colors from predefined pa palette. And if I don't want that, I can go back and redefine them in a symbols and then everything which has that color is going to be swapped automatically. So there's a little bit of that atomic design systems approach here, where if you, let's say, define it well and you swap these shades, everything which has that shade is going to automatically update. And if you don't believe me, here's another demo. So let's say I'm going to have those both tertiary. And as you can see, they're purple. If I go back to my symbols and find that tertiary color, and I'm just going to change it to, let's say, I don't know, let's make it like this, like pink, as you can see that button automatically changed, but so will change these two items because they retained that shade. So it's awesome as that you can make it a dynamic color switch if you want to. So I hope this video was useful. I hope you're learning more about sketch and UI design as you progress. Leave a comment down below if you have a specific use case I can cover as per usual, leave a like and subscribe to his channel and stay tuned for more material. See you next time.